This is Chippy with the Aspire One 522 that I've been testing over the last few days and I just wanted to uh, show you guys how you uh, take it apart to access the uh, disc and RAM. Uh, as I showed you on the unboxing video there's this central panel and then there's uh, a bunch of screws around the outside. Ignore those screws around the outside. Um, all that needs to be done and I hope I can do it uh, live here is to very carefully take the uh, the keyboard out and there are a few little um, catches at the top which allow the keyboard to, to spring forward. You might need to uh, you might need to get a very very small screwdriver and just lever it up. It will bend and it will pop out the the side here. I'll have to just do this one at the top here. There you go. And that will just allow you to get underneath it and lift it up so that it bends and then you pull it forward. Now underneath here, and I've already taken this uh, apart, is the ribbon cable cable that was that that would be connected to the to here I've just put this back together to show you and you just need to pull this little uh, connector forward that's this one here to unlock and if you can see that but unlock it and then the cable will slide out you better take this away and then what you've got is uh, four more screws here 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 and here which then release the back panel. Well, I've already undone those and then all you do is you take the rubber feet out from the uh, outside and then you can actually prise up from here. And it should allow you just to get your finger under there, run it across the top and that should, there you go, lift off pretty easily. And there you have it, access to everything underneath and uh, from here on it's extremely easy I've just dropped in a 4 gig uh, RAM module I think only 2 gigs of that will be seen by Windows 7 and then there's one screw here that you take out that allows you to um, pull the SATA drive out you just pull that forward like that and there you go that's in a little casing and there's a Toshiba uh, drive that you can replace with a SATA drive if need be. There's one interesting little area up here which looks like it could be for a mini PCI Express slot. There's no connector under there though so you can't simply uh, drop a 3G card in there which is uh, a bit of a shame but uh, the wiring is, this is probably a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module here with the Wi-Fi and um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas and uh, that's pretty much it, that's all you need to know. This is the uh, fan, pretty quiet. That's probably the uh, CPU or the Southbridge and the uh, CPU. I think it's a two chip, chip solution on this. And that is it. There's really nothing much to it. Nothing much to it at all. Super, super small. In fact, the biggest component is the hard drive probably weighs about 50 grams. If you replace that for a super lightweight SSD you're going to uh, knock a little bit of weight and probably a noticeable amount of weight off it as well. So that's it. So in reverse there's the one screw that goes in here to lock the hard drive in. I'm just put that in. I'm leaving that module in there. That just slots in from this side and just clicks down all around. Once that's in, you have to do the hard bit, which is getting the ribbon cable back onto the uh, back onto the uh, motherboard. And I'm not sure I'll be able to do this one on video because I want to get uh, my torch out to see exactly what I'm doing here. If you're lucky, it will just slot back in. And I'm probably I'm going to have to adjust this slightly. 
Um, I don't think I can do this on video, to be honest. Okay, that took uh, a few tries to get that in, but I think that's done. And then you just push the keyboard back in. There's little clips which will just make it slot into place. Ah, <laughs> and I forgot to put the screws in under there, so I'm gonna have to take the uh, keyboard off again to do that. Once you've done it once though, it's not too hard to do it a second time. And you just lift it out. Oops, let's watch the key watch the keycaps. Just pushing those in, that should pop the keyboard up. Come on. I'm gonna do this carefully, I'm not gonna rush it for the the video. On the sides. Yep. Okay. If you're lucky, you can just actually. If you're lucky, you, sh you might be able to do it without taking the. Yes, I think you can actually. Yeah. You should be able to do it without taking the ribbon cable off. Just having a closer look at that now. Be careful of that ribbon cable. There's one. Let me just lift that up. There's enough play in there to allow you to slot the other screws in behind, which is gonna let's just bring that camera around there so you can see that. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm just putting the four screws back in which keeps the back on. One two three and the fourth one I've already done here. So keyboard on slots back in very easily. Good. Back is solid. And now I can put those screws back in that I really didn't need to take out originally. Those are the ones on the outside. So leave those in. You won't need those. You won't need to take those out. And that's really if you want to take the motherboard away. So the, the plastics are really, really super thin, very flimsy. Just be careful when you do this because you really can break the plastics on this very, very easily indeed. It's not a rugged build at all. And that's the reason why it's just 299 euros. So a moment of truth coming up. Oh yeah, you've got uh, these plastic bits at the front. You might want to put a cloth underneath that when you uh, when you do it. Now these are not easy to get in because you have to fold the bottoms down and then push it from the back and then lever in the sides, which I don't think I'm going to do on video because it took me ages to do. Oh, there. Maybe you can just sort of tuck in the outside and it should pop in. There we go. There's one in. And the second one. Let's see if we can get that in. Just push it in from the back first. And then tuck the rubber in around. You probably find that using a little screwdriver or something is easier there. And that's it. Done. Right, moment of truth. Does my new purchase still work? Okay. 
can lock the battery in place. And let's see if we've got uh, two gigs of RAM. So F2. Get to set up. Let's have a look what we got. We have total memory four gigs. So the BIOS shows four gigs, which is great. It's great that it supports four gigs. But I'm pretty sure that when we go to Windows, it's only going to show two gigs because that's the limit for Windows 7 home starter. Let's see, that will only take 45 seconds to boot. At least it's all working still. Let's see what we got. And the two gig should give this quite a nice boost to be honest. And the next project will be to Oh well, that's the Steam application not working properly. The uh, next project will be to put the SSD in. This is still booting, but it's doing pretty good. And here we go. Ah! Yeah, it shows 4 gig and then 2 gig usable. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in on that. 4 gig shown, 2 gig usable. That's because of Windows 7 Home Starter. I do intend to upgrade this to Windows 7 Home Premium. But for the time being, a 2 gig is really, really going to help. So that's how to take the Aspire 1 522D, no, 522 apart, upgrade the RAM. And um, be careful when you do that. Don't forget that when you open it up, you've voided the warranty. So if anything goes wrong, don't blame me. Don't blame Acer. You've only got yourself to blame. This is Chippy with your NPC portal and the Aspire 1 522.